nice and loud. Thank you. Midnight. Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast. Last week, there was a lot of bad blood, but it turns out it might have been all a bit of a wrestle dream. We are going to take a look back at WWE bad blood from somebody who was there live and in person. And we're not talking about the people who did the videos of Cody and KO after the event. Plus, Wrestle Dream is going on this weekend for AEW. We're going to look at that, and someone's got a brand new deal. So make sure you can see a little bit of color because it's Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 391, exclusively here on Wrestle Addict Radio. And it starts right now. feels so much better now that I can, I can actually hear the music and kind of cue myself in at the right time. Power of technology, folks. It's absolutely amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 391, exclusively here on WrestleAddict Radio. We are live right now on uh, on Twitch, on YouTube, and live here on Facebook, currently going on as we're recording. NXT is going on right now. AEW Title Tuesday is about to start. It's the first battle. It's another battle on Tuesday for AEW and NXT, so we'll keep you posted on some stuff as it uh, goes along. So we've got a pretty jammed packed show for you tonight, some interesting things to talk about but first and foremost we do have a special guest tonight he is pretty much going to be clearly an inanimate object because he is still lit from bad blood straight from atlanta georgia sir charles how are you oh i'm doing quite well how are you i i'm i'm doing great it's you're going to be our first ever like anim like inanimate object with the skype symbol <laughs> the voice the voice of, of sir, sir charles. charles yeah you're like our new ai <laughs> at this point <laughs> at this you know point. when i was a kid i always wanted to be max headroom well, there you go. Now you can live your dream. <laughs> you can live your dream in all of its glory. With me, as always, a man who saw Sexy Red and immediately lost his smile. Will Tarashak, how are you? I mean, to be fair, Ricky, last week you actually nailed the cue for the uh, Did intro I really? <laughs> without even... Like you almost pretty much nailed it to the second because we told me you didn't do it on the outro. I'm like, wait, wait <laughs> you didn't hear music like at all? I had I had no idea, truly. It turns out to be a Skype issue because yeah. Skype continues to be the worst video conferencing app ever, even though it was the first you one. Know, out you know, when you listen to music Skype. all the when you listen to the same music week in and week out, you figure out like what where the cues are. Yeah, the cues. It's yeah, muscle memory. It's all in your head. It is worked in bars for ten years, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. That also helps. But yeah, um, I thought Bad Blood was pretty tight. Can't wait to get into it. Kay Murphy, welcome to the show. Congratulations to your Mets. Hello, hello, hello. Is that all you got? Hi. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, it cut out. No, no, no. The com no, no, no. It cut out on you, me. We can hear you. You're back. So Okay, hello. No, it's, that was great. The was computer perfect, showed though. Will was talking, and then it just all cut out. So I was just like, yay, the Mets. Hello, everyone. Even our, even our programmers um, want the Mets to win. <laughs> bro. That's the Mets are going really to the World Series. <laughs> it's not, Let's fucking it, go. I don't like this fucking third, <laughs> uh, third fucking wild card spot. It's fucking yeah, bullshit. It's, it's weird. It's, there's, there's worse things. There's worse things in the world, like the New York Jets. Anywho, folks, uh, we've got a pretty. So, get me. Rest in started. peace, to Salah. Yeah, man. <clears throat> his career, at his career at least, he's very. Yeah, much he, yeah, yeah. He's very, yeah, very Literally much. Literally the first high coach to be fired by mid-season in like 25 the years. The Jets, yeah, they haven't fired somebody like that in a mm -hmm. long time. Dude, it's still early season. Yeah, it's not mid-season. Like, it is still early season. That's the shocker. Season. Week five. Yeah, I was like, wow, after five games, you're just going to give him the axe? Like, he <laughs> barely made it to bye week. <laughs> he barely made it to this when bye is starting. Although, football. real quick, before we get into wrestling, the Jets do have the have the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever and sign Bill Belichick. Oh, my God. He would Stop it. it. Dude, he do was it. too busy dating 18-year-olds. No. You know what? But he, he would... He I would think lose a, his mind. He's like, I get the coach another Hall of Fame QB. Watch what I do now. God, him and Aaron Rodgers would not. Get I know. That's why I wanted you to happen. You think Aaron Rodgers wanted to fire Salah? <laughs> He'd be like, get Belichick the fuck out of here after the first quarter. After the first quarter. Ricky. You know what? Aaron Rodgers would pull Antonio Brown and just walk off the field. <laughs> 
Walk up the field, like, no, it's, it's over. This is done. I'm going back to Green Bay. <laughs> yeah. Move order. Or he's not, you know, he'll go to Minnesota. Just pull like far, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he will. He'll never be a yeah. jet. Aaron Rodgers wanted wants so badly to beat Brett Favre. <laughs> when 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 Brett uh, when Aaron Rodgers take ayahuasca, he pretends he is Brett yeah, Favre. Yes, and embezzles a lot of money. That's that. There you go. Be Brett Favre. Yeah, yeah. That that. He's like you, depressing to watch. Like yeah, I don't know, maybe because he's a forty year old QB. No, literally the entire. I don't know if you guys watched Sunday's game. But you just watch him look more and more strung out and more and more dejected yeah. as the game goes on. <laughs> like, you could see him wondering, like, why the fuck did I sign a contract with the Jets? Because he thought it could have his way and he could not. Yeah, money. money. He also probably thought Deontay, uh, Deontay, Devontae Adams would fall. Devontae him. was like, nah. <laughs> I'm... Devontae's like, I'm not. <laughs> it's still the Jets. And any place is better than the Jets. Hello. Watch it and get traded to the Chiefs. God, I'd be so fucking mad. I'll be so fucking mad. Dude, the NFL would be so fucking mad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Any of you folks, we've got a pretty jam-packed show going on this week, even with our inanimate AI, Sir Charles, with us. That's, we should create an AI and name it Sir Charles. That'd actually be pretty. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> I mean, Charles actually has a phenomenal voice yeah, for it, Yeah, it would too. work out quite well, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> So let's get into it, folks. So over the weekend, we had WWE Bad Blood, a highly um, anticipated PLE, especially for something that's, te that's technically like a B-tier PLE. And for the most part, it uh, it delivered. And our AI, Sir Charles, was in the building for the event. So can you tell us uh, how how it was inside the arena? Okay. Uh, I was able to watch the, the broadcast to watch the replay. Yeah. So I will tell you now, the the broadcast did no justice to how loud it was in there the entire time. Really? I'm, I'm sure. I'm telling you right now. I, I told Ricky this before. Uh, I, th I think it was like mid last week. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go in early and tailgate and tell as many people to me to be as loud and as crazy as possible so we can get more shows. And I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> it was unreal. That's great. It was I mean, you guys sounded like a damn good crowd, too, though. Like, the, the mm -hmm. Hell in a Cell match, you guys were in it the entire time. A tag match the entire time. Um, when Dom, a lot of the Dom spots and you fell through the cage, like, it's upside down. That was a great spot. Like, you guys pretty much brought it for most of the show. So the fact that it doesn't do it justice to me is like, God damn, how loud was it yeah. in there? Like, yeah, was, I felt no fatigue from you guys. Yeah. yeah. It, listen, we it didn't stop. I don't know what was going on. I guess everybody... It, I, that early evening show, or that's what that early evening, late afternoon show. That's that's a perfect time. Everybody's wide awake. Yeah. <laughs> so we came in with great energy. That's true. You're you're like but you're it, drunk, but you're not it too can't drunk. Sounds like the dream. Right. You're legally drunk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're legally drunk, like but you can still go home safely. Region. Yeah, you can still go home safely at the end of the night. Yeah. End of like, like what? So, Ten o'clock. Right. Something like that. I, I was, will tell you. Yeah. Um, there was there was another light debacle, and I, I'm always a fan of those ever since Mania 35, with the uh, oh please turn the lights off and all those chants. Yeah. We did have another debacle up in the 200 levels. They they was having some issues with oh, the lights no. with the lights coming off the Tron, but it was it I was the screen too, Jumbotron. Oh yeah, that same section because so where I was I was facing the ramp off to that that cor that the ring post in in the timekeeper's corner. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of yeah. the area the, okay. my, my angle. Um. The guys in like dead center, so like straight back from the uh the announcer's desk, their that screen in the jumbotron just had two sections go completely black multiple times throughout the show. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> wow. And it was great. Someone then landed and paid the bill. I could see the corner, so I could see both sides, so it never affected what I was looking at. But I was like, man, I'd be pissed if that was me. <laughs> yeah, there, I mean, there's also uh someone screwed up Cody's entrance. During the live show, it was like yeah. someone's yeah. getting fired. They did that too. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> Apparently, wrestling has more than yeah, two royal families. Has more than one royal family. You had it twice, <laughs> just in case. Well, I think someone started the music, but no one started the pyro, or like the like the the light, the entrance lights and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Someone, someone done done goofed. Also, like the crowd couldn't tell when the woe was for the band playing. Like the band. <laughs> I think it's like Roman's orchestra sounded way better. Let me put it that way. Yeah. 
the band was a great idea, but it didn't. didn't Usually, marching me. bands it are didn't loud. Hit like I thought it. Usually, would. marching bands are yeah, loud. Yeah, that's what I mean. So. They were quiet. Yeah. Like was, they've done marching bands before, and it's been incredible. I think, I think it ties into cool. what I was saying about the crowds because I, I felt like it was great. <laughs> I enjoyed every second of it being there live, and also watching them like casually walk out and watching the 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 string. Ba- uh, whatever you want to call it, ensemble, yeah, orchestra, orchestra. Yeah, the orchestra. Thank you. That that came in from Roman sprint in with their instruments. <laughs> <laughs> I also yeah, believe. I think so. That was a college. That was obviously a college band, it's an HBCU band. Uh, it's like mm-hmm. yeah. uh, I forgot. I forgot where they were. I forgot where the name of the uh, the name of the university. But I don't believe that was the entire band, which could have attributed to it. And also, I believe Roman yeah. was like the Baltimore Philharmonic. So there is like there's going to be a difference in sound yeah, quality. Yeah, no, one one was clearly professional, <laughs> and the other one was clearly yeah. college. And also, if they're kind of kind of lowering the crowd volume, what makes them think they didn't they didn't lower like the live music volume either? Mm. It's something to consider. I'm not saying that's what the that's what it was. Obviously, Charles was there, so he can have a better yeah. assumption of. I mean, it was still a really cool gesture. I'm glad they. Yeah, did. it was also yeah. it was something totally organic. They're like, hey, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, but some, was- something about it on TV just came off as odd. Yeah, and then the, then the miscue with Cody's entrance theme didn't. That, help yeah, either. that's that's what screwed it up for me. That that also didn't help like at all. <laughs> no, not one bit. Which which is an absolute shame. But otherwise, it's great. It told a great story. Speaking of great stories, oh yeah, Dwayne's back. <laughs> um, he he brought the belt, the People's Championship, with him, and Dwayne had the loudest pop of the night. So loud, Charles called me right after, and I was like, "Yes, he has Dwayne the Rock Johnson." I go, "I I know." <laughs> I'm on TV watching it. <laughs> He's like, I know. I just wanted to tell you. And The Rock literally did what he, what you're seeing right now on the screen. If you are watching us live right now, he he stood there, stood there. Did the eyebrow, <laughs> did the eyebrow anyway. counted to three, kind of you know did the did the cross over the neck, and, and walked away. So now we're left just wondering, what the fuck, Dwayne? Well, you got a hint though, because I popped once for The Rock's music. Then I popped again once the final boss came on. <laughs> that once the music switched, you're like, I literally went, oh my God. Then they went, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he's, he's like, because during the Roman and Cody match, I was like, oh yeah, these two are clearly one and one A. Yeah. And then the rock came out and was like, he's just not even a number, a letter or a number. He's yeah. just the rock. It almost like the final so, boss team looks like it was like the rock, like rehired Jim Johnson. He's like, Hey, I need you for this song. Yeah, I need I need I need you to do me a solid. It, it, and Brian Gorris went to his house, put a gun to his head, and said, "You're making a fucking song." So we have no clue what's going to go on with The Rock and Cody. I think this is a long term booking to The Rock is turning on Roman at some yes. point, and it's going to lead going to lead to Mania. Um, so so it's it's interesting. What's even more interesting is The Rock went live on like on like Instagram or something right after he was walking out of the arena. He was walking all around outside of State Farm. He walks past the w, one of the WWE production trucks, and it has, like, Dusty. He goes, oh, hey, Dusty. Love you, buddy. Hate your fucking son. <laughs> 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 it's just the rock randomly being the rock, like, absolutely saying nothing. The bigger thing here was that uh, WWE made, I think, a genius-level move. You had Kevin Owens and Cody do a bit outside of the arena. Where KO yeah. attacked Cody outside of Cody's uh, bus, and there were fans all around. And WWE had no cameras; they literally let it go viral on its own. Bleacher Report picked it up. Fans have multiple angles of this footage and bits, and essentially, it marketed really? themselves. Yeah, WWE has no actual footage of this. They did That's Roblox. Not- they did a Roblox story <laughs> angle where it's just like fan created, fan created content. Honestly, that is fucking brilliant because if they do it in the right place, they know yeah, it's going to get recorded. They did it in a place where fans could it's see like what it. What they wanted with the twenty four seven championship. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. And so that's the thing where Triple H was like, "Oh, you know, we saw what we saw what happened, and we'll we'll address that at a later time." So like the, all the footage you're going to see of that Cody and and Kale thing. It's fan, fan footage. footage. Yeah. 
Dude, I wonder. No, they had to have plants there. I'm they assuming. Had had I don't there. know. There's multiple angles of, of this too. There's, pro- there's there's at least one plant. Yeah. I mean, because here, plant. right? Because like, at least one plant. Because here's the thing too. Like here's how you can. Here's a good hint. It's like if they give credit to someone when they play it on oh, Friday, when you, like on on like the bottom like on like the lower whoever. third or something. Yeah, like you know, yeah. courtesy of. Right, like, because otherwise, that's like, okay, if it's an actual fan, I'd be like, hey, man, you can't just use my footage. The fuck, what? I mean, fuck but also me, by that, right? by that point, because this has happened to us too. Well, by that point, they could have reached out and been like, hey, can we use this? That happened when we did. That happened when we did Elias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say ask has permission. And the fan goes, uh huh. <laughs> I mean, that's what we anything. did, but we were also young and drunk in New Orleans. We were like, yes, do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go for it. Well, because there was so many other fo- so much other footage. Yeah, basically, is whatever they can have, They don't have no, to take they, yours, they don't right? Um, still, uh, yeah, I thought it was very smart. And you know, people were saying they should do this on TV. And my response is, well, watch on Friday. You're gonna see it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> like, is to me, there's there's no difference. This is clever. This is different. And it uh, kind of makes sense kayfabe because KO can be like, I was so mad to see you and Roman like pretty much hug it out virtually that I couldn't wait till Friday. I had to beat the fuck yeah. out of you now because Kevin's own Kevin yes. is a hothead, right? So it, it's fits in character. This is a great move and uh, you'll see it on yeah, Friday. Plus, I mean, Marks. KO has a right to be mad. Roman tried to run him over with a golf cart. I don't think he forgot that. Yeah. He also cheated in the last minute. <laughs> <Yeah, that's true. laughs> <laughs> it's also that. So other highlights from this was that Triple H was doing a lot of duty uh, this this week. He had a lot of celebrities come back, and he he highlighted and brought up that the fact that we are going to actually make some sort of re- real gimmick with Crown Jewel and give us something totally specific to Crown Jewel for like the 500th time. If you remember, we had the best in the world tournament at Crown Jewel. We've had the greatest Royal Rumble at Crown Jewel. There have been so many one-off trophies at Crown Jewel that they finally said, we've had enough. We're actually gonna do something that can actually last for years and years to come. And they released the Crown Jewel wrestling bout, which my broke ass wants this so badly for no particular reason whatsoever, just to say that I have it. And the Crown Jewel, the Crown Jewel Championship is going to be the winner of your two world champions, men's and women's pace, and go up against each other. Long story short, it's the old Survivor Series gimmick that they gave up on for Survivor Series. Is what this is. Yeah. Yes, they can do war games. Yeah, it's fucking brilliant, dude. And that belt, one word, Imperial. <laughs> That's a great That's word for it. Like. It's really it's a great. Crazy. Word for it. Charles, how did yes. that how did that belt look in person? It looked fucking incredible. I I wanted I, I briefly thought about running down the steps, hopping the guardrail, just trying to grab the belt. And then I realized that like I have a, <laughs> honestly I have a job and I have a decent job. Like I I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, that would have made my night. <laughs> made my night. I'd be like, I'm coming with Only bail. Money. I got you. <laughs> No, it was great. So, yeah, you're going to have champion versus champion. And then the winner of that is going to be pretty much, I guess, quote unquote, the crown jewel of WWE. It's something you can hold for a year and run with it. It's it's like it's like the dynamite diamond ring. If they actually use it outside of MJF. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a gimmick like that. Sure. I mean, it's it's smart, too, because like, I like how it's going to be one for the yeah. men and one for the women. It says who's the best? The best. It's it's also because we we love that gimmick for Survivor Series champion versus all star game. Yeah. It's also it's a it's a yeah it's all star game. It's a great gimmick, and uh, yeah, WWE is just looking for another ten year like eight billion dollar <laughs> deal from this fucking country. So give them something that's actually yeah, worth it. It's a beautiful looking belt. Obviously, there was only one belt that was displayed. <laughs> I'm assuming the women's. I'm assuming this is the men's one, and the women's one is going to look something yeah. pretty similar to that. Probably it's white. It'll probably yeah. look better than this, slightly which is smaller. Swi- slightly smaller. Yeah. Slightly the best smaller. thing to come out yeah. of this segment was Gunther challenging Goldberg. Oh my God. I'm <laughs> so excited. I love every second of it. I'm I not a, like, say, I've never been a Goldberg mark. Go ahead. Kay, please. As someone that is the Goldberg yes, that is mark. You. Um, I wanted CM Punk to win the Royal Rumble, but now I want you Goldberg to won. win the Royal Rumble. I like it. It was meat <laughs> slapping. Okay, I like it. Mad. The only thing is, this would- Bill ain't got that many in him. He going to show up in Saudi Arabia, and then he's going home. You're going to get this one check, and he's done. And then, 
and then he'll go to money. Then he'll go to. And he'll go to the Royal Rumble, and then he'll go to WrestleMania. Something That's like it. that, yeah. The greatest part about it is that the more that Gunther just loves shitting on legends, he's very he's he's a funnier legend killer, Randy. At this point, he yeah. literally told Goldberg, "Come on, hop the fence. I have three minutes for you." I was like, <laughs> I was like you can't. I was like, it's so good, it's like, so good. He's, he's like, Bill. Or the other week when I told Bret Hart you were my favorite, <laughs> I lied. <laughs> <coughs> I was just like, yeah, I know you lied. What if Bret, what if yeah, Bret Hart is a special guest referee? Oh, God, no. That, that'll turn into a shoot. Oh, stop. <laughs> turn into a shoot. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Bret Hart is going to kick Goldberg in the head with concrete in his Also, boot. real quick, can we talk about how big Gage got? I was gonna say, I was gonna mention I, I forgot his kid. I almost, was I almost called adult. him Surge. He's, he's not an adult. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's not an adult kid yet. It looks he is, huge. He recently, ironically enough, um, he recently signed with Colorado to play football there. So he's what senior, he's a senior in high school. In yeah. high school he's right committed, now? He's he committed, he's committed, committed to play at Colorado with Dion because Bill Goldberg and Deion Sanders are friends because they played on the Falcons together. Oh he's a lot of that's that's nepotism <laughs> at its finest, right there. That's all I could say. I don't know why I thought Goldberg's son was like twelve. Because the last time you saw him, Bobby yeah. Lashley put him in the Hurt Lock in Saudi Arabia, and it was funny as fuck. I'm not Saudi, you know, SummerSlam. It how long ago? That yeah. was funny as fuck. It's like that three was years excellent. ago. Yeah. Yo, he definitely hit a growth spurt. The engaged was kind of big there too. He's like, oh, this kid's going out. <laughs> Yeah, that that was a, that's a crazy thing. But also, sticking on the Triple H matter, he is going to be the uh, subject of our next segment, a segment that I debuted with Kay when you were away. Well, and this segment is called "Now That's What I Call oh, Yikes." <laughs> oh God! Oh, this is going to be great. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, yes, we're back. we're back. Yes, now that's what I call yikes. So, Triple H was doing his was doing his presser. Uh, after a show, which he always does, you know, stats, figures, all that hot stuff. I actually did not watch it. However, I didn't need to to figure out what the highlights of that pressure was. It wasn't anybody else, but it was Triple H. So Triple H was asked a question uh, by a reporter named TJ Legacy of Soapbox Run the Ropes. Pretty much said, hey, Trips, are you aware of the fact that, ironically enough, you haven't had like I think it was like a black performer or a black male performer on any of your PLEs in the last three months. As that was kind of his primary to his question. So his question was essentially, um, how does he gauge the difference between making sure there was appropriate representation on the show and giving opportunities to deserving talent? So Triple H's response verbatim, and I'll read it here. His verbatim response was, I don't see the difference in anybody. I don't see the color. I don't see the nationality. I don't see any of it. I don't. I just see talent. I don't see the difference between men and women. I see talent. We tell stories with those talent, how they can handle those stories, and how they and how they can represent those stories, and how we can bring those stories forward. I don't keep track of any of that. I do what's relevant and what is best and what is being delivered the best. That's what goes. No different than men and women who main events. Whatever the biggest who main events, whatever the biggest stories are, that's where we go. And so the Internet has been ablaze with uh, how they feel about the comments, particularly of Triple H seeing uh, I don't see color. I don't see gender and I don't really see nationality. All I see is they are talents to me. Uh, so I bring that question to you because I already have my thoughts. But Sir Charles, I'll bring it to you first since you are a guest and our AI component this week. What are your thoughts on this? Did we lose the AI? Did we lose Charles? Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's there. I'm, I'm, I'm here. Am, am I here? Wait. Yeah, you're, you're, you're am here. I, am you're I good. back? You got you. Yeah, got you're you. good. You're good. I thought you were just thinking. Okay. Thank God. Okay. okay. Thank God. okay. He shouldn't have said that. I, I, above all else, he shouldn't have said that because all it sounds like is he. But much like Vince McMahon can't tell the difference between the character and real, and real life, because it sounds a lot like what he was saying to Booker T back in that championship run ahead. Yes. WrestleMania 19's people like you usually don't get into the, uh, become a world champion. 
that that is right. That. And I, I and I don't see color was was their way of saying, hey, I'm not racist anymore. And that's yeah. that's the vibe it's giving, unfortunately. It it is <laughs> yes, very unfortunate. K Um, agreed that he absolutely shouldn't have said it. I feel like a lot of white people, like, <laughs> they don't understand the implications of I don't see color. Like, they think that that means that they're not racist or they don't perceive bias. But by not acknowledging your individual talents, like, in general, like, it's their race, their gender identity, like, their sex, whatever, like... By just seeing all of your talent as talent and talent alone, you're doing your talent into service because you're putting them in a box. Like, they're just like a number on a sheet. Like, by acknowledging who a, a wrestler is, is crucial for representation. Like, he says he doesn't see color in wrestlers, but like, it's important to like see black wrestlers featured, especially in like Atlanta. With like a, like a like a high like a higher black population than like lot like places on Long Island, for That's example. Like <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Though, like Triple H had like a, a really big opportunity, and like he kind of fucked it up by like trying to be. Like, I don't see color. Like, I don't acknowledge my talent, but also not acknowledging that he didn't put like any like black wrestlers on the card. Yeah, like Bianca and, and Bianca and Jade hosted and Naomi and Naomi. So I forget that Naomi was there. If Nia um, was going over anyway, Naomi could have simply wrestled in that spot. Mm hmm. <laughs> He would have avoided the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, but Bailey's the bigger star. I don't disagree. Had we booked mm-hmm. Naomi a little better when she got back, they booked Jordan Grace better than they booked Naomi. It's a fair point. <laughs> I feel like Naomi has, trying to should've... build Jordan Grace as a potential <laughs> star. But I feel like Naomi should have been booked better from the moment she came back, and I still feel like she's <laughs> a like a B character. In like the subplot of Jade and Bianca. Okay, that's fine. I, I I I can I can see that. I can get behind that. But at whose expense? You can't you know you can't put everyone over. So if you're gonna put Naomi over, great. I would love to see Naomi over. But who do you but then? She's ne- but she's put- never put over. Is what I'm saying. She's always put pushed to the side yeah. to either elevate other talent. The the issue I think is with the density of these rosters. They could have easily had more over talent at while at the same time utilizing more of the roster, if that makes sense. I think I get what you're going. She so you want longer, she so want more matches and longer shows because not we necessarily, as fans not didn't necessarily. necessarily want that. that look, it, don't, it doesn't necessarily have to equate to that, but how long has Naomi been back? Okay, about a year, almost oh. a year. <laughs> and in that It'll entire be a year, time, It'll be a year at the Rumble, yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, like, in that entire time, she could have had a good little two, three win stint, and it wouldn't have made it wouldn't have made a difference in the grand scheme of things. TV feud. Yeah, she could use a TV feud. Sure. Yeah. We're not talking no, TV doing, feuds. They're doing it with Mello. That's true. Yeah, but we're not talking TV feuds. We're talking particularly PLEs. I know we 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 kind of skirted around it, but Will, we need your comments on uh, Triple H's and the, Triple H's remarks at the presser. Yeah, so you guys got to help me under, help me understand your position Gladly. a little better. Because personally, I see nothing wrong with the comment. Because I see it as I view all my talent as equal, right? Everyone has the same opportunity depending on talent, the story you're telling, and business we can do together, right? That's how mm-hmm. I view it. And I view this as isn't that like the goal? Don't you want your person in position to be seeing, I don't see you as a black athlete or a black um, or a, a female athlete. I see you as a WWE superstar. Like, isn't that the goal? Isn't that actual equality yes. where everyone is doing yes, the same? Yes, but you have to, you have so, to 
people already have to be the same. And we've already seen through history and through the history of pro wrestling in particular that not everybody is the same and not everybody is treated the same. Right. So I think that's the issue. And it's been said before. I think Cody said an AEW thing where Brandy said, I'm straight and now I'm a Brandy friend. When you refuse to see color, you refuse to see the person as an individual and what makes them different and what makes them unique. If every wrestler is the same, that means every wrestler is interchangeable and you can kind of put them in any spot they want. But every wrestler is not the same. They're, every wrestler has different skill sets, different specialties. And if you just say, I just see them as talent, you don't see the uniqueness in any of them. There's, there, I think that's an issue there. And I think the other issue, especially for me, is that in Triple H's tenure, his short tenure, where they have gone to places where the population is of, mm-hmm. of a you know minority population compared to the United States, you have highlighted performers of that nationality, of that gender, of that ethnicity in that place. Uh, backlash. Bad Bunny, Damian Priest, Zelina Vega got the show stealer spot. You know, yeah. Um, didn't mean didn't mean event it's, though. It's, which it's not about we, that. It, we, but which we won. Yeah, well, I knew we did one. Yeah, yeah. The, we, yeah, we wanted, we wanted Bad Bunny event. and and Damien to main event. I I totally agree with that. Um, you had I just uh, Clash of the Castle this year. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn within the tag titles. Yeah, Bash in Berlin. Right. Gunther was literally was a promotion. It's like, hey, Gunther's here. You know, and you have then you go to Bad Blood. Xavier Woods is from Atlanta. Kofi is there. I mean, again. Atlanta, probably the most populated city, probably a city with the most, with the highest yeah, black population. Yeah, they call, they, call, they call it Black Chocolate New York, city. right, essentially. And they gave you Goldberg for the Atlanta representation. Yeah. They brought Jacqueline out. No one's seen Jacqueline for a while, okay? Yeah. You had Jacqueline, you had Quavo, you had Metro Boomin, you had <laughs> Little Baby, you had that party in the suite, which is totally a black-coated party. <laughs> you know, dark lights, yellow, red solo cups, Jay Uso's clearly like drunk in the background with shades on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but you didn't have what actually mattered, which is interesting. That's my viewpoint. Yes. Right. So okay, okay. That see, that makes That's, more sense. That makes yeah. more sense. So I get. I, yeah, I get that now, especially because it's at Atlanta. It's like your your actions aren't backing up your <laughs> words, but. You can point to other examples where it's like, but you did it here. You did, did it here. here. You did yeah. it here. But why did you do it yeah. here? It, so, that, so the question probably could have been framed better because that makes more sense. Well, that he, makes the way thing more is, sense. he didn't even answer the question. His original question was how how do you how do you gauge you know proper representation and who and who's deserving? And he's just like, well, I just see right. them as talent, and whatever works works. The thing about it is like his if he doesn't say, I don't see color, I don't see nationality, I don't see gender. Like the of the second half of his response is actually kind of okay, you know. He's like, oh, I, you know, we go with what works at the time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, what's well, best for bit. He should have dropped the best for business line. Yeah, That's what he totally should have done. Yeah, but to see, like, I don't see, you know, I don't see gender. I don't see like, I don't see color. I don't see nationality. I don't see anything. Like, it was also like a triple whammy of like, don't say those things. You know, like you're the creative force behind the LWO. <laughs> you know, like, what does he see when he sees the LWO? You know, you created LWO. You are kind of like the godfather of the four horsewomen. Like these are things that he that you know they they exploited and they pushed. And I say exploited in a very loose term because any like any good company is going to exploit something that's going well for them to make money. That's how capitalism works. It's an exploitative system. Look at the women's evolution. Yeah. They don't give a yeah. fuck about women anymore. <laughs> yeah. So. We got one pay per view. Yeah, so it's one of those things where it's like, oh, like, oh, come on, trips, like, ooh. like it was. It felt like a Tony Khan level of why did you say that? To it's like to me, <laughs> and Tony Khan called WWE the Harvey Weinstein of wrestling. <laughs> well, <laughs> did you watch? Did you watch that Vince? Doc? <laughs> we, Not we, just, we didn't even mention Pat. It Patterson came, it, last it's week. on my. It's on my Fire Stick now. Oh. I will be watching it probably. Over Man. The <laughs> I watched the whole thing. My God. Yeah, yeah it's wild. Yes, Fred said it. Uh-huh. So, yeah, TK, no, he doesn't sound as crazy anymore saying something like that. <laughs> no, it's that. still crazy. It's still crazy. <laughs> it's still crazy, but, if it not, but not completely yeah. inaccurate. So, so Fred's is saying what I keep hearing is about if you don't see blank, you don't see my experience, and that's kind of what we're going. That's what said Cody straight, because apparently he had Cody in a, in a video that came out that's been circling around recently. Cody was doing an AEW presser or something of an AEW event. And Cody said, 
I use, he goes, I had the same exact, he goes, I had a conversation with my wife about this. He goes, I used to be like, I, I don't see color person. And Brandon was like, then you don't see me and you don't see my experiences and the things that I went through. And he goes, that changed my whole world. Mm-hmm. And, and after after watching, I was like, you know what? Maybe we should let Brandy off the hook a little bit. She still made AEW heels, but like, she, you know, maybe she has some. <laughs> maybe she's yeah, some Brandy, is, to, Brandy is definitely due for face a face turn. Face turn. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was the whole thing. It's gotten a lot of people in the tussie. And I, I, I don't blame them for that, especially because we have all of the examples in the past two or three years where Triple H has done completely the opposite under his booking regime. It's crazy that he said all this at the presser because I've been like saying recently, I'm like, wow, like he's been really like considerate about culture lately. Like yeah. talent whose first language is in English, like they're doing promos in their native language, which is like really fucking cool. Yeah. Whereas Vince would just either not put them on TV or give them a mouthpiece or make them suffer through a promo. Like I thought Triple H was like kind of progressing. With like being inclusive, but this just feels kind of like three steps backwards. And I feel like there just has to be an attitude shift, like backstage. Like if they're going to pull the I don't see color shit, then they're going to have to kind of reconsider how they want to, you know, go about booking and like running WWE as a whole. Like, you can't have that attitude in 2024. Yeah. It's ironic because I was thinking about this too, when I was, you know, kind of ruminating on what triple eight said. And I was like, you know what? This might be the one thing that Vince hasn't one up on, on triple H. And let me explain that. I think it's more of a sense of when there was such Vince usually put whatever was controversial, whether you liked it or not, he put it on TV and more in more particular, in, in particular, he put it in the ring, you know, a lot of yeah. the time. Yeah. The prime example I'll use is the Kofi Mania push. That is literally a like a, a an ism a, ism for a more umbrella term, an ism coded storyline where hey, I did everything right, I've done nothing wrong. How come I'm not you know progressing? You know, and it was such a big thing that Vince injected himself into the storyline, like he played like the evil angry billionaire like last like one last time. You know, and that's I think that's that's kind of a notch on Vince's belt. He's like, oh, this is controversial or something. This is kind of crazy. Let's let's put it on TV. Let's put it in the ring. Let's highlight. Let's make it something. You know, sometimes it didn't go over well. You know, like people like you don't become world champion. Like that was like that probably probably shouldn't have done that. Or when he said the N word and was walking around in a do rag on TV. Like not always the best, but regardless of the fact is like he didn't say I don't see color. Vince was like I do see color and I'm going to profit off of it in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes it was good. Sometimes it was bad. But he never said like, "Oh, I don't see the differences in people." Like he, he clearly did, uh, you know, a lot of the time. So, would you prefer Triple H's method or Vince's method? I would prefer. No, it, 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 <laughs> it would. Honest, yeah, no, honest. it would be probably a, a, a hodgepodge of those where. I mean, the answer is you, you kind of need both. Of course. Why does right? it have to be life, one life or is, the other? Life is better in yeah. balance. It's it's more but. so you have to see the differences and you have to put it on TV and you I think you put it on TV to gain yourself a wider audience base, which is usually what happens. Um, and so when you when you when you're trying to pander to a wider audience instead of a default audience, which usually the default audience is a white male, um, you then have to get more creative with your stories. And when you need to get more creative with your stories, you then need to have a more creative writing room. And that's kind of what boils. I think that's kind of what yeah. it boils down to a lot of the time. Yeah, no, we we talked we talked about that with yeah. women specifically. Yeah, like the um, the Otis and Mandy storyline was written by a woman, and it was fantastic. Yeah, we still we yeah. still remember it. Yeah, we, that's one that's one we're gonna remember. For a while. <laughs> My peach, you know, <laughs> <laughs> got Otis over. It works so well. Um, so that that's kind of a thing. So Triple H, I'm interested to see how he bounces back from that. Uh, you know, if it's kind of gets gets mulled over for the time being, or if this continues to be a trend that we decide to like follow. So that's our segment of now. That's what I call yikes. A segment that will come up periodically when we sometimes awkward things happen in wrestling. Anywho, moving on to the AEW portion of the show. AEW signed a really, really interesting lucrative deal. So the deal is, I think K you said is about three to four years worth a hundred fifty plus million per year, something like that. Yeah, I believe it's th- uh, three three guaranteed years with the option, option for the fourth. fourth. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, hold on, I'm looking up right now because I know we put in our chat because I was. Is there, from what yeah. I had read, they had originally reported it to be a three year deal option for a fourth mm-hmm. year at 150 mil a year. Then I believe, I don't remember the source. I, yeah. So I don't remember the source, but whatever source it was, I want to, I don't think it, it might have been Matt Men, maybe. I don't Matt remember. But a, a reliable source said, that the deal was closer to, I believe, like 189 mm-hmm. mil rather than 150 million dollars. Yeah. So a year. what I have here, what I have here is 185 mil. Th- Wait, did fucking? T- oh my god, we have a new North American. No champion. fucking way. Will Obafemi this, has this lost? Fucking idiot. This oh, fucking idiot. Do you want to know to who? who beat him? Your favorite yeah, boy, Tony D. Vadon. Tony D. <laughs> yeah. No way, my man. Man, I'll turn away for two seconds. I like after the Mets game ends and I put NXT on on the big monitor and I'm like, now that's representation. Half of me feels very represented right now. (laughs) Finally, it'd be Italians. We haven't seen this kind of representation since the FBI and ECW. You had Santino. (laughs) We did have some, but he's Canadian. That's true. But it's Italian. But Italian character. (laughs) Um, yeah. Dying so what we have here for the deal, let's just say, okay, 80, 185 million a year, uh, for three years, which is a guaranteed $555 million deal with an option for a fourth. They would be stupid not to take a fourth. The fourth would put it up to a $740 million deal. Uh, the deal as it was first, I think reported on variety is that dynamite and collision stay on TNT and TBS respectively. No more rampage. Thank God. The fucking Lord. Um, apparently, they still might be going to FS1 and rebranding Rampage as Shockwave because I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, on top, the big thing would because Thunder was taken. <laughs> <laughs> the other big thing with this deal. <laughs> That's terrible. That's good point. That's terrible. <laughs> the other big thing with this deal is that uh, starting in 2025, Dynamite. And Collision will be live streamed on Max. So it's going to be a simulcast. You can either watch it on cable or watch oh, it on God. Max. Oh, I love simulcast. that. AEW pay-per-views will also be coming to Max, but not for free. It'll be at a discounted oh, price. I get it, but fuck you. <laughs> yes. Do we know how discounted? They have not disclosed that yet. That's all coming in 2025 in the new in the new calendar That's deeply year. Deeply annoying. If it's anything over 15 bucks, it's not worth it. I agree. I kind of agree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, how much is max per month? Uh, oh, 15 bucks. I, no, I think I it's like 18 15. now. Is it up to 18? I think well, it's up to 18 now. I have it. Yeah, look it know. up. So honestly, to be honest with you, I think this is a great deal for AEW. Their deal is something different from what WWE is doing because if WWE ad free oh, is seventeen. Oh, they're with Disney now. No, but that's the yeah, super that's deal. That's the, that's the bundle oh, super deal. I'm so talking about Max alone. I'm on. No, no, no. I'm on Max's website. Yeah. The smallest bundle I'm seeing here is sixteen ninety nine a month, and that's Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max bundle with okay, ads. But Max alone, it would be what like. Max loan with ads is 10 bucks. Okay. No, no, but I'm like looking on their website and I don't see just Max anymore. So they're probably anymore. pushing the bundle. Go, you got to go, you got you to go to monthly, Kay. Are you on the bundles monthly and yearly? Yeah. Oh, yes, bundles. Go, go, go to monthly in the yeah. middle. All right. With ads, nine ninety nine a yeah, month. Ad go. free, sixteen ninety nine a month. And then ultimate ad free, twenty ninety nine a month. And the twenty nine dollars is four devices and 4K. So. Yeah. Yeah. Although they never really fully stream yeah. in 4K. That's like a, some marketing term. It's really just like 1080p. Kind yeah. Of. So like in for all intents and purposes, this is a great deal. I hate the last part where you can't get, we can't watch the pay-per-views on Max without paying an extra fee. They're already taking off the pay-per-views from Bleacher Report because essentially there's a Bleacher yeah. Report section on Max where all of their like live sports are going to be uh, anyways for it. And when Bleacher Report first started on Max, it was supposed to be an added extra tier to pay for, but due to like difficulties with, you know, streaming live sports or like, let's do it for free for now. So that will probably be behind the paywall sooner rather than later. Uh, especially- yeah. It took, it took them a long time to get that live streaming infrastructure up. Cause it's, mm-hmm. it's very difficult, yeah. especially cause especially if they have to simulcast, that's just another layer of tomfoolery. Yeah. So like this shit takes a long, and it's expensive. Yeah. 
It's very, very expensive to do right. Yeah. So. so honestly, it's good for AEW. I hope it brings in fans, especially on a weekly basis, which is kind of AEW's strong point for the most part is their weekly, their mm-hmm. weekly programming. I mean, it, it's it's a, it's a thing in the positive direction for AEW, and they should be really proud of it. I mean, let's not let the one pay per view snap oh, absolutely kind of take away from yeah. the fact that this is a great deal for them. Like fucking yeah, phenomenal. You, like it's an yeah, incredible deal. Sick. They're not going to make WWE numbers, but seven forty over four years is a fantastic number for them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Find me any company that after four years they sell for seven hundred seven hundred million dollars. Yeah. You're not gonna find many. Yeah, even Elon would be like, "Give me at least five. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's five years now in the AEW because they're turning five. They're returning five. Yeah, true. They're turning they're five. Mm-hmm. Um, that's crazy. That's been five years very, already. Very much so crazy. With that, so congratulations to AEW, uh, turning five, got that mega deal. A lot of that's going to take place in 2025. What's taking place this weekend over on the other side of America that's not being hit by a category potentially six hurricane is AEW Wrestle Dream uh, going on in Tacoma, Washington uh, this Saturday, October 12th. Um, it is an interesting show. Speaking of not seeing, uh, it is, I think, a seven card, a seven match card. Something like that. I looked it up today. There's one caveat uh, match that's, that we're going to talk about that we're going to have to make kind of a really crazy super prediction for, but we'll get to that right about now. The first match on the card is John Moxley, uh, a man who attempted to murder Brian Danielson at All Out um, with this new serial killer, psychotic character going up against Brian Danielson. Obviously, the caveat still remains. If Brian Danielson loses the title, he pretty much essentially is on a Ric Flair run and he will retire from a full-time basis. So that's kind of what you got here. John Moxley has reinvented the Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, Wheeler Yuta, I believe, is probably on the outs. You have Moxley, uh, Claudio, uh, Marina Shafir is the heavy. She's pretty much the China of the group, uh, a more serious China of their group. And so you, you got this match, which is probably going to be a wild, crazy match. You're probably going to see attempted murder by Mox again. Hopefully not putting a plastic bag over someone's head. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was, that was kind of wild. You know, it's kind of wild when the crowd starts chanting, this is murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, and that wasn't even the craziest thing on the card. That's the same card that had Hangman put a syringe through the cheek of Swerve. Oh, okay. you didn't like watch that. that. You that's, didn't watch that, did you? That's not clean. <laughs> yeah. No, I did. I watched. I don't. I, I don't watched that. <laughs> yeah. So it was. So uh, I'll, I'll reiterate to you, Will, real quick. It was all out. They did the whole lights out, unsanctioned steel cage match. You know, but you know, we turned the lights out and the show's over. But here's this extra match that's not sanctioned, but we're going to show it anyways. So, <laughs> yeah, plus sanction, but we're gonna profit yeah. off of it. Wink, wink. Um, so yeah, within that match, it was a crazy still cage match. They had they had a cinder block, which wasn't like which didn't seem like it was a uh, it was a gimmick cinder block. That was a real cinder block that they power bombed somebody onto. Um, and then uh, the grand finale after all of that would include a burnt ember from Swerve's house. Uh, Hangman took a syringe, put it in Swerve's cheek, kept it there, and then and then hit him over the head unprotected with a steel chair so hard the steel chair broke. It was hard to watch. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, it was... Just, that's, that's, that's a yeah. lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you should, yeah, you should, you should watch it. it. It's Just watch it once. Like, like the, 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 the needle was hanging out of his cheek. Yeah, I'm looking at this picture of John Moxley, and I can only think of like 2016 Triple H. <laughs> You've got a good point. You've got a great point. That's, that's just all I'm seeing. <laughs> like Triple H still in charge of NXT. <laughs> good point. Very good point. With that being said, uh, Sir Charles, our AI bot this week. Who do you got winning here, Brian Danielson or John Moxley? Um, you know what? Give it to Brian Danielson. Why the hell not? You know, honestly, I really don't nope. care. Fuck AEW, but it is what it is. I'm here. I'm here for a conversation. <laughs> <With> terror, <shock. laughs> Every, everything Charles said. <laughs> Bry, Brian Danielson. Bry D. Bry D walks away with this, but uh, I don't know. He's bleeding. Probably. Oh. It's, it's going to be 
blood at some point. Kayfabe, are you back yet? Kayfabe's not back yet. Uh, but while we wait for Kayfabe, I will say this. If I'm going to go with Danielson as well. But if there's anybody that's going to kill Brian Danielson and have him die in the ring the way that we all have said that he wants to, it's going to be John Moxley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be John Moxley. And honestly, I wouldn't put it past AEW to do a death angle to get Brian Danielson off TV. God, I can see it happening. <laughs> I could see it happening completely where Danielson just kind of dies on like they'll do it like when they almost when they almost chopped off uh, Val Venus's penis on Raw. Oh god, choppy choppy. And then like the lights went out at the last <laughs> second when like the <laughs> Yeah, and it's going off yeah. the air. <laughs> or they do like a Pillman has a gun type deal. What well, great Pillman has a gun was just great. Pillman great has television. a gun was was fantastic television. K Fabe, who do you have for this? Moxley or Brian Danielson? Um, I'm gonna go with Brian Danielson because he's not retiring yet. He's he's never yep. gonna retire. I mm-hmm. I just don't think he is. He'll find a way to do the first ever like wheelchair main event on AEW. <laughs> he will. He he really, really will. Moving on to this, we have the international championship, Will Ospreay versus Ricochet versus Kanosuke Takeshka. Now Takeshka and Osprey are both part of a Don Callis family. And by the way, folks, we already got Osprey and Ricochet on AEW Dynamite fifth year anniversary show. In my opinion, blew that load way too early. Um, however, it was a good setup for what's going on in this match. Ricochet and Osprey pretty much played all the hits on the fifth anniversary show, all the flippy shit, the things that you've seen a thousand times before from them every time they wrestle. Literally the exact same opening sequence from the G1 climax. You can, yeah, you can put it side by side. You're like, this is the exact same thing. What ends up happening is that uh, it goes to a double pin. So it becomes a draw, and then the and then Tony Khan says, no, continue it. And then when the match continues, the catcher comes out, interferes, takes out Osprey. You now have this triple threat. Osprey, Ricochet, Takesha, the AEW International Championship oh. on the line. Will Tarish, like, who takes this? Eh. Why does Ricochet look like he's wearing the belt? Like in his head. <laughs> yeah, that was really like a bad choice oh by God, Ricochet. Wait, he does that look, is really <laughs> like he does look like he's wearing the belt. So that kind of makes you think he's winning. Um, but AEW isn't that smart to do something that clever. So Will Osprey, gotta go with my fellow Will here. <laughs> there you go, Sir Charles. Um, again, I don't care. But um, <laughs> we're gonna go with. Let's go. Let's go with Will Osprey. Why? Why the hell not? He's white. <laughs> I'm also going for the white guy. <laughs> well, asked. all about the Mayo Mafia this week. So here's the, the interesting thing I know about this thing is that <laughs> Ricochet shows up at All In, which is like only like a month and a half or so ago. Um, and Ricochet cuts a Ricochet promo, which, by the way, folks, isn't the greatest thing in the world that AEW fans are just now realizing. <laughs> It's not yeah. great. The rumor is they've asked him to use chat GPT for his promos. That's just a rumor. I cannot confirm. Stop that. it. That's a story. Stop. That's so embarrassing. So, and so Osprey's whole thing with Ricochet is like, yeah, I want to face you. Just get some wins under your belt. Ricochet got like two wins and got granted an international championship match on a dynamite. So I don't I don't know how much Why is Tony Khan? I don't know like how much this? wins and losses still matter in AEW, but they're kind of like the points don't count on whose line is it anyway. That's all I'll say about that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. God, Tony Khan is doing a great Drew Carey impression. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty good. You cool. know what? I bet I could beat Tony Khan in GM mode. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably can. <laughs> I think Boris could beat Tony Khan in GM mode. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of GM mode, by the way, AEW is looking to find a new developer for future video games. They're dropping Ukes like WWE did 10 years ago. So so who's going to do the game? Someone better than what the, than the shit they Omega put out himself. with. <laughs> That's Kenny Omega to the first game. <laughs> no, by himself. 
Touche. <laughs> Touche. And anywho, moving on to the next match on the card, we have, guess what? The Young Bucks are in a tag team championship match. Go fucking figure. They're putting. You know, that's really inspired booking. I have never would have thought to do that. <laughs> are they facing the revival? No, they're again? facing Private Party, actually. A team that somehow, throughout the years of AEW, always finds a way to beat the Young Bucks. Private Party did win a triple threat tag match um, at the end of Collision this past Saturday to become the contenders for Young Bucks tag <coughs> titles. Question is, is this the time that Private Party actually becomes relevant and wins tag championships from the Young Bucks? Well, Tara, no. No. <laughs> no. Dude, <laughs> this guy on the left looks like Montez Ford in his junior prom. It's <laughs> a good point. <laughs> like, like, he's, he's not winning jack shit it's a solid i think about a broken charles it's a very very solid point k fame the young bucks because why would they lose they yeah limited schedule and if tony khan was any any smart man they'd put in private party and you know what you gotta get a shot a private party. I feel like I don't know. I'm probably wrong about this because I just watch AEW when I feel like yeah. it. But I feel like private party's not like big enough to take over. They the just Young Bucks. got They're back very from, private because no one knows what the they fuck just got they back are. from some pretty bad injuries. One had like a torn pack. I forgot what the other one had. So because I'm like, weren't they friends with Matt Hardy for like a while? Yes. And then they just because I think it was I think it was just due to injury. Oh, that really makes sense. Because I forgot about them until like recently. I'm like, oh, I wonder what happened to them. It's for shits and gigs. Charles, are you going are. with the Bucks or are you going with the private party? I, okay. So I actually have a value opinion about this one. Okay. I'm going with the Bucks because if I was the EVP, I wouldn't book myself to lose either. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just saying. That's an accurate point. It's a very, very accurate point. Moving on to the next match on the card. We have the TNT Championship. Jack Perry putting his TNT emo title on the line against Shibata. Let me tell you how this match came to be. Uh, Jack Perry, who's walking around in a in pretty much a blacked out short school bus that has scapegoat ridden on top of it. Literally, he's driving this bus to every town that AEW goes to. It's kind of weird. Um, and so Shibata approached him in the parking lot because Shibata doesn't speak English. He used a Google Translate uh, app and said, hey, me and you wrestle dream TNT title. And essentially Jack Perry was like, yes. So that's how this match came to be. And that's why I'm going with Jack Perry. Anybody oppose? No. <laughs> Next. Let me just that in later we do have a match that is not actually going to that i don't have a card for because it's not solidified yet because it's about to be happening on dynamite pretty much right now as we speak <laughs> lex express 2.0 it is the lex express 2.0 in the worst way thank you friends um mariah may is going to put her uh aw world championship title on the line and she is going to face the winner of tonight's match on aw dynamite between willow nightingale and dr Britt baker d m d so the big question is does mariah may actually drop this title to Britt baker or willow nightingale i say no will you say mm. it's a good give it a dmd oh in our second week back you give it right back to her yeah top star she's supposed to be a pillar <laughs> So, uh, Kayfabe, who do you got for that? I'm going to say Mariah Retains. I, I, um, I don't think Will, they're going to give Willow the women's title yet, and I don't think it's going to hurt her. Um, and I don't know, but Baker just came back. She doesn't need it right now. She doesn't, but I wouldn't put it past her. I mean, like, Britt Baker was the women's division for, like, three out of the five years of AEW. Mm -hmm. So... And who who knows what what'll happen with that? I mean, now she's away from Adam Cole, so. Oh yeah, that's right. They yes, broke they up. did. Yes, they did. Did they? Really? Yeah, no one told you. Yeah, yeah they broke up. We could have seen that coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, Charles. Do you have a Do you have any instance of who would you want to win? Willow Nightingale being from Long Island, by the way. 
Got you. Uh, we're gonna definitely go with a retention and not to get the pinfall over a bridge. So obviously, we'll test pinfall. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, very interesting. Moving on, uh, Darby Allen has put up an open challenge to anybody to face him because he's still scorned by the fact that Mox said you're not good enough to run this company. <laughs> and so Darby's in an emo mode trying to prove himself, and Brody King answered the call. So are we going to get... Bye. <laughs> that, are you kidding? I'm, I'm not joking. Why is he wearing pink? That's his jacket. That's his, that's, that's his jacket. jacket. This is also the same guy who apparently put out on social media this past week. I, he goes, he, I forgot where he was, but he was at some place with a bouncy house, with a bouncy, like, with a ball pit, which should scream all sorts of red flags. Anywho, he goes, I saw his birthday party, the kids in the ball pit, and I, and I taught all the kids how to do a coffin drop, and he put this video on social media. Oh, my God. Such very, was he in makeup? I don't know. I did. I, I have to look at it again. <laughs> I know he was wearing the pink jacket, though. That I know for sure. Does the makeup, does the makeup make it better or worse? It makes it worse. <laughs> worse for sure. Okay, <laughs> babe. Who do you have for me? Kids. <laughs> Brody King. You just don't like Darby, do you? I love Darby. What do you think? I'm he's going Darby. So, he's frail. Look at that pink jacket. <laughs> oh, I love the pink jacket. It's super cunty. I can't go against Dipset. I'm going Darby Allen. <laughs> go against Dipset. God. Goodness gracious, you're such a New Yorker. <laughs> it's like a stand from Dido. A stand from the Eminem song. Yeah. So, again, ROH not having their own real pay-per-view gets the ROH World Championship put on the line. Um <laughs> On an AEW paper for Wrestle Dream. So we have Mark Briscoe, the inventor of, as he says, redneck kung fu. I know, I know, I, I'll let it go. Versus Chris Jericho, because Chris Jericho just wants to do something. I, Jesus Christ, I don't yes. need this. By the way, has anybody listened to a Mark Briscoe promo lately? Yeah, I was uh -huh. there. Okay, can you explain to Will what a Mark Briscoe promo <laughs> sounds like? I'm going to use one word, drunk. Close. Um, you need subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> so as someone that watches TV with subtitles, just because my ADHD will typically, like, I won't focus all the time, so I miss shit. I struggled going to AEW Live, and then Mark Briscoe, they had Mark Briscoe for the promo, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this man's saying. <laughs> I'll find out next week. The, the crazy part about Mark Briscoe is that he also, um... But he's so He's very animated, though. like, he's like an entertain... It's so captivating, yeah. but you know what the fuck he's an he's entertainment. Saying. He's an entertaining, idiotic promo, if that makes any sense to anybody outside of the wrestling world. He's an entertaining, idiotic promo, and he always has a word of the day. And the word of the day is so beyond his reading level, it's surprising that he can get away with saying it. Um, the word of the day is ectoplasm. It'll literally be something like that. <laughs> and he'll mm -hmm. try to incorporate it into the promo. For no good reason whatsoever. This is the same guy who's leading a faction that includes Orange Cassidy. So there's characters galore in this faction. The children can't read. He's helping. <laughs> Pretty much. Ironically enough, this is a very interesting setup for this match. Jericho's doing essentially, you know, his little Jericho show uh, promo with the Jeritron, whatever the fuck it is, on AEW Dynamite. Mark Bristow comes out. They have a back and forth. Bristol's like, I respect you, blah, 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 blah. And Jericho pretty much is like, hey, I want a shot at the world title. Uh, and and Bristol's like, well, you know, he's he's like, he's mulling it over, blah, blah, blah. And Jericho's like, you know, I, I deserve a shot at the world title. He goes, because, I, you know, I am good and I don't think you can beat me. And he goes, well, Mark, your brother Jay probably could have beaten me, but you can't. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. No, that's what I call it, yikes. <laughs> and I was like, sold. I was like, we've got a match. <laughs> and so so he invoked the name of his recently passed away brother. I think Jay Jay has Jay's been dead for less than a year, I think, right? It's been over a year. It's over either, a year, I think. I don't remember. I know it's less than two. Year. Let me yeah. see. 
But anywho, that's the match we have now. We have an extremely personal match for a title, but no one sees on our ways, but they only see it on AEW because no one, I don't think anybody buys Honor Club. It'll be it'll be two years in January. Okay, so it's, it's been less than two years. We're approaching two yeah, years. So this became a wildly interesting match out of nowhere. And I it's not even for the storylines. I'm kind of pulling for Mark Briscoe on this one. Like, but I can also see Jericho for the sake of pulling a Jericho winning the ROH world title just to say he won another company's world title again. And that's where I go back and forth I, with this. So, Will, what do you got? I don't know, dude. After a line like that, you typically don't win. True. <laughs> Very true. So you're going with Mark on that one? Like, you, you, got, you got to get this heat because you're not going over. All right. Okay. So I'm going with the Briscoe. Okay. Are you also going with the Briscoe? Yes, I okay. am. Charles, do you care about this match? Did we lose our AI? That's what it sounds like. Hello, Hello. Sir Charles. <laughs> Church, oh, what? Oh, oh. Yeah, we've lost them. We've lost them. All right. Uh-oh. Shit. Just us. Just us, folks. All right. And then there, and were, then three. there were three. Damn. All right. See, this is what, this is what ROH does to people. It makes you just not want to be a part of the product anymore. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it happens. Although, again, interesting for you. So, last match on this is the AEW Zero Hour uh, so since this is the pre-show match for the oh. Ring of Honor World Television Championship, we have Atlantis Jr., a luchador from Ring of Honor, which I have never heard of, versus someone we have heard of and haven't seen for a while, Brian Cage. Yes. Brian Cage has returned in some aspect on free pre-show TV to w- to go up against the <laughs> Ring of Honor World TV title. And to be honest with you, just for just in case, I'm going with Brian Cage. I I've never cared about a match less. Really? Not even We LC? All right, don't you dare disrespect <laughs> We LC. <laughs> First of all, that match had no business being that good. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, I had a great answer. I thought you were going to ask, like, um, wasn't there like a, a vignette at Bad Blood, like, coming soon? It was like a, like a race car driver or something? Oh, Motor City. Yes, that is the Motor City Machine oh, Guns. That's what it is. Dude, I, I was so ready for a wrong answers only having it be Heath Slater, Jackson the Gills. <laughs> Sweet man Dan finally makes his comeback and he wins the world title. Could he you imagine Uther. a three-man band return? I, dude, I was so ready. I was so ready. Dude, I was going to go all in, but Kate just goes, Motor City Machine Guns. Like, oh, oh, yeah, it's definitely Motor City Machine Guns. All right. Have you have right. you noticed that WWE has a bunch of like, like three or four cryptic promos in rotation? So one's Motor City Machine Guns. The other one is the Viking Raiders. They're going to bring back the War Raider gimmick. Yeah. Um, I didn't need to be Viking Raiders anyways. War Raiders was perfectly fine. And then I think the other one is anything that the Wyatt Six does. Yeah, so where's where, where's the Wyatt Six been? They haven't really done We're looking for a new target. Either. I think their next target is either The Miz or Karrion Cross, based on what happened on Raw. Yeah. Gross. So, but back to this. Do we have Brian Cage or Atlantis Jr.? Do you want to flip a coin? Uh, Cage. Brian Cage. Cage. Atlantis Jr. is just like Nacho Libre. He looks like he has a body of Jack Black. Look at him. He's a thinner Jack Black. Thinner yeah. Jack Black? Which I feel like isn't hard to be a thinner Jack Black. Jack Black is pretty bulky. He's pretty he is bulky. Pretty, is he? I mean, he's fat. So I mean, oh, he bulky. You could have said, said Husky. Husky would have worked for me. Yeah, bulky implies muscle. Yes, it does. It? That's what that's what I when Brian I think Cage. when I think Brian bulky, I think you know muscular person. Like I think like when Randy Orton first came back in Survivor Series. Hey, oh, there he is. Our AI has a no, voice. Ripped, ripped to the gills. <laughs> that's what Randy Orton. Our was. AI has a voice, and he has a face now. Look at this. Hey. Skynet hey. has become self-aware. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> so. Has some technical difficulties over it's here. Perfectly it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. So, are are you going with Mark Briscoe or Chris Jericho for the Ring of Honor World Title? Who has it right now? Mark Briscoe. Yeah, sure. Let's go All ahead. Right, cool. I was going to use it like you know, Chris Jericho also invoked his dead brother's name in the promo last week. I don't have any viable reason to ever root for Chris Jericho. Not that I have any like dislike for him. I just don't care. Understandable. That's how I feel about Chris Jericho lately too. 
The learning tree is like my <laughs> my least favorite gimmick of Chris Jericho. It's so boring. I like don't. It's like get he it. was trying to be like um, Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt and just missed the boat. Like missed the boat. I don't get any of that from that. Yeah, I just ugh, I don't know. It's weird. Then we have Brian Cage versus Atlantis Jr. You know Nebra Beast Charles. Who would you go with? Uh. Oh, no, Brian Cage. Wow. Doesn't watch AEW, still went with Brian Cage like the rest of the people who also do not watch <laughs> AEW consistently. <laughs> I can't wait to see the results of this show. I'm not going to lie, because that is the end of uh, our Wrestle Dream prediction. Wrestle Dream is going on this Saturday on uh, on pay per view from Tacoma, Washington. And I think about like seven or eight. I totally forgot uh, what the time frame is. But we are going to crown it to see how good this show is going to be. Uh, one crown being the worst thing in the world. Or I heard just in layman's terms, the exploding barbed wire death match. We all remember that spot. And 10 crowns being like WrestleMania 40 uh, levels of epic. So, K Fave, how well do you think this? Wrestle Dream AEW pay per view will pay per view will be. I'll give it a seven. Okay, fair enough. A little tire shock. Yeah, seven. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what this one. I'm gonna go. I almost gave it a six. I'm I gonna, I'm gonna go six seven. five, Sir Charles. Uh, what's like not terribly disrespectfully bad, but at the same time. I don't really care how well they do. Was that like a six? I'd give it that. Yeah. I was going to say like four. When you say what's not terribly disrespectfully sure. bad, yeah, I'd be like, that's ah, four. <laughs> but I, don't know. I feel four like four is mean. the lowest you can go without being. Me- no, I think four is the lowest you can go without being me. Three below you're being, <laughs> you're kind, being of kind of a dick. Mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, are you going to go six? You're going to go four. Let's go six. Okay, yeah, we're going six. We're not expecting much from this. Ironically, this is the same pay per view where Edge showed up for the first time. Oh, yes, yeah. and we know how that ended with Edge thinking he can fly. Hey, look how far over that ball exactly. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, Edge thinking he could fly, and and Edge could not fly. And now he's out <laughs> indefinitely because that. Yeah, yep. this is what happens when you go to AEW. You think you can do everything, and and you cannot. But anyway, folks, that concludes our show this week. We want to thank Sir Charles for being our AI assistant and finally coming to life at the end of the show. Uh, Sir Charles, I do what I can. Yours. Where, uh, where can people find you? Uh, honestly, I'm all over the place. Uh, TikTok at Cir- Circumstantial Hubris. Instagram, same. Uh, I don't really remember what my Twitter is because I don't really use it. And that's about it. Don't call me because I won't answer the phone. It's true. He does not have. He does not answer his phone at all to anybody at all. <laughs> I believe, uh, believe. Believe my. Take my word for it. Take my word for it, folks. Anywho, uh, with that being said, Will Tarsak. This is bullshit, exactly. man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at this. Matt Ritter finally showed up at the end of the show. What's up, Ritter? <laughs> you missed. You missed. Yeah, he did. You didn't miss. Yeah. And now we have now we have a blank thing. What's going on, Ritter? Anywho, you can watch the replay at some point when it comes up. Uh, anywho, uh, we'll try Ready to get the show on the road? Yes, we'll do it. gentlemen you have been listening to kings of the rings podcast episode number 391 i actually have no name for this right now we'll figure it out in uh post-production i've been your host king ricky rose you can find me on ambassador biggs across all social media outlets b-i-g-z in ambassador biggs find kings of the rings podcast at k-o-t-r underscore podcast across all social media like share subscribe leave us some five star reviews links to all of that are in the description below if you are listening to us make sure you're listening to us on wrestle addict radio the cure for the common wrestling podcast and follow wrestle addict radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on twitter and at wrestle addict radio all one word everywhere else on the social medias will tarashak uh, ladies and gentlemen my name is will tarashak t is in thomas a-r-a-s-h-u-k i don't know what you guys but i crowned bad blood a solid eight crowns i thought it was a damn good show uh top to bottom but yeah we've got to do that we did hey, Murphy, to do what'd you yeah, K-Fed. 
<laughs> um, I would also give Bad Blood eight crowns. It was a very enjoyable show. Um, Hell in the Cell gave me life, as expected. Uh, you can find me across all social media at K A E underscore F A B E. And I need to go to bed. Of so course what's, you do. Same. Which re- chat? Same. I'm so I. W- I woke up at two o'clock in the morning. I haven't gone to bed since. I'm Who very are tired. You? That's and in- <laughs> okay. Go to sleep. No, I, no, no, I didn't okay, do no. it. Run like the wind. I didn't. I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't want to stay up. It just I couldn't sleep. No, and here no, I am. I'm, I'm so sorry. Anyway, folks, while everybody so goes out goes and has a nap time, we are totally going to bypass probably the uh, the post show today because everybody has nap time. Yep. And Charles and I are probably going to go and play GM mode instead of watching AEW Dynamite because that's exactly what we do. When we return at some point, it may not be next week because I have a Comic Con next week. Uh, we're going to talk about WrestleStream. We're going to start Ooh. preparing for Crown Jewel. We're going to do all of that fun stuff. And the one thing that we're not going to do that's not fun is bring Slack back on the show because fuck you, Slack. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> we will see you soon. And yeah, fuck you, Slack. <laughs> <laughs>